Over the last year, there's been a real change in the DAW landscape with the rise of systems coming from AMD as opposed to the Intel whitewash of a few years back. Uh, today, I'm joined by Pete, who's in charge of all of our audio systems. And Pete, why don't you explain just some of the background on why we've had this rise this year and why they've suddenly become so suitable? So this takes us back to the uh, first generation launch of the Ryzen 1000 series a few years back. Uh, we did run them through our regular door bench testing here at SCAN, which is, uh, it involves us essentially just building up multiple instances of various effects to see at what point the CPU is going to overload and uh, start distorting. What we found is that with the, uh, the first generation, there was uh, a bit of a performance lag where once you hit the 80% sort of CPU load, especially at the lower buffers, 64 and 128, you'd start to see uh, it topping out its performance. You wouldn't be able to access the last, yeah, 10, 15% of what was there. So with the latest generation of these Ryzen chips, the third generation, that seems to have been solved, it's, or not entirely, but they, as we're learning more about it, we've been able to work around it. So yes, so what we, what we found out this year is that with the uh, the memory that's come to market over the last 12 months, we were starting to see 3600 and uh, similar sort of speeds becoming more uh, more common in the marketplace. And with this, we've noticed that these buffers at the lower latencies have started to uh, close up and uh, you'd be able to extract the maximum performance from the chips. Last year, when sort of they first came out, that you were sort of in charge of the testing that really uncovered this hole. But it seems to be quite unique to audio systems uh, in that even with the previous generations, like sort of offline um, activities like video editing and gaming um, weren't really affected as much. Um, so uh, wh why do you think this is? You're correct. It was uh, slightly noticeable and um, it wasn't overly common. So what, what what we think we found is is that with ASIO buffers, they tend to be very low, uh, very demanding and that the buffers will fill up and get past with the data to the CPU. Now, what we've discovered on this generation is that the internal interconnects for the memory bus uh, are running at a 3733 uh, buffer. Well, they're an internal megahertz yeah. rate. So as the uh, performance of the RAM has become, become closer to this level, we're, we're seeing the uh, discrepancies in performance close themselves up. When I look back on the results of the initial testing last year, um, it kind of ran in what we were seeing before in that the, there's two types of door bench tests. There's the DSP based test and then there's the virtual instrument test. These measure an audio computer's performance in different ways. The DSP based test measures how many instances of the same plugin can be run at one time. And this, the virtual instrument test, uses multiple instances of contact to see how many notes of polyphony can be played simultaneously. The different columns represent four different buffer sizes of the interface it was tested with, from 64 samples up to 512. Compared to the DSP test with an average 5% increase, this was a lot more of a noticeable difference, up to 22% between the 3200 MHz RAM on the left and the 3725 MHz RAM speed on the right. Yes, no, we were seeing that as we stepped from the 3200 megahertz through to the, uh, the 3600, even the, uh, closer to the 3733 level. Uh, each each time we would gain maybe 10% more performance. So the 3200 would be lacking 80%, well, we have 80% in total, so we're 20% missing. At the 3, 3600, it was more like uh, 90%, and then we, we kind of hit the 100% with 3333. I mean, now, that, what's happened? That, that's not in, in, in considerable, considering that that's sort of the performance jump that we'd see from a generation to the next of sort of chips, what we have seen from Intel sort of for each generation. Absolutely. And even, even AMD, uh, it's quite common to see a 10% jump or 15% jump at a price point each time. So this is essentially a free upgrade. With memory, there's kind of two numbers behind it, really, isn't there? There's the actual speed of it, and then there's the timings. So what 
um, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not just about buying the memory that's uh, fat at the right speed. You've got to get the one that's actually rated properly. Um, is there an advantage of doing that? Yes, absolutely. Um, so the interesting thing we found early on was is that the 3333 memory is not common in the marketplace, and it still isn't. Uh, but having found the increase in performance we stepped up in the previous memory models, uh, we started looking at overclocking the memory. Now, having spent some time with it, there's some great AMD uh, memory optimization tools out there that require a bit of research. You've got to work out what DIMMs are in there and discover a bit of background of the memory. Uh, but if you're willing to put the effort in after a few hours, you might get 96, 97% of the performance out of it. Um, and then, then along came the new, newer AMD optimized memory packs. Uh, including the ones from Corsair. Uh, we see when we drop those in the XMP timings on those uh, give us pretty much 100% straight away on the 3600 megahertz memory. Um, now the interesting thing is is that the CAS timings on the packets are probably not dissimilar from the ones that are not proclaimed to be AMD optimized but hidden, along, hidden away in the background is something like 30 plus uh, other smaller minor latency timings and it's these that really seem to make the difference for these packs of memory. And how much of a difference is that actually making? Well, if you draw a comparison against the unoptimized 3600 RAM, it's about 10%. You get maybe 90% performance out of the unoptimized packs. We'll get the whole 100% out of the uh, properly optimized ones. Wow. So, so, so basically, from going from an unoptimized 3200 megahertz pack to an optimized 3600 megahertz pack, you, you could be looking at 20% increase. Yes, yeah, something like region. Wow, so that's absolutely not inconsiderable. <laughs> so th the advice is basically, uh, as it stands, I, I mean, is there any point in overclocking from 3600 to 3733? On the already optimised packs? No, not really. Uh, you can't, the, the timings are tight enough that you're not losing any performance, so I don't think there's anything to be gained really either. Uh, we've seen instances where people have been putting in memory that's actually faster than the internal controller and the offset in the timings is actually making it lose lose performance again. So basically your advice now for anyone building a, uh, a Ryzen based system um, is to go for one of these uh, already optimised packs at 3600 meg. Yes, absolutely. Megahertz, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Is there an advantage for previous generations? Would this carry over? Um, we think so, yes. Um, given the previous generations, uh, didn't have the faster RAMs tested at the time, but with the Ryzen 2 testing that we did at one point, it did seem to uh, show up benefits. So I don't see why this wouldn't work with the older chips, especially given that they all still went on the modern boards. Thanks a lot for that, Pete. Hopefully we've cleared some uh, uh, cleared some things up about Ryzen and memory and especially how it affects audio. So uh, thanks a yeah. lot for your time today. No, thank you, Tom. And um, we'll see you for another video again soon. If you've got a question, drop it in the comments. Otherwise, we'll see you later.